Welcome to the studio. I'm Chef Gordon Rader with Indian Hills Community College, and today we're going to talk about tortillas. And really, there's two styles, right? Corn and flour. And flour tortillas are basically made up of white flour, um, baking powder, a little fat, could be lard, could be uh, Crisco, and water. But there's two things that make your life easier now. Uh, if you'll go to Hy-Vee or Fairway or Walmart, any of the stores in our area, you can pick up harina preparada, and this is made by Quaker, and it has all the elements mixed into this, so really all you have to do is add warm water. And if you like corn tortillas, this maseca, which I use in a lot of different ways uh, to make tamales, and basically it's a dried corn flour, um, that's instantaneous and you add water to it and we'll have a separate show on this because I want to show you all the applications or at least some of the applications that you can use this maseca for. So this is a lot of fun and especially if you like corn this is a great product. So I'll move this out of the way because today we're going to concentrate on flour tortillas and again you can do a search on the web for a recipe and again you'll see flour, baking powder, salt, lard and or Mm, Crisco and then water but again this has all the dry ingredients so basically you'll need a couple of things to do this a bowl and I like to use a big bowl this is a small bowl because we're doing smaller quantities for you folks but a big bowl because I like to make a lot of them at one time Friday afternoon get off work go home cook some up have them for all weekend so I don't know two or three dozen goes great with chili so and this maybe you've got a rolling pin at home but I just use a broom handle and uh, go ahead and cut it off into sections and this makes a great piece. Your broom handle breaks because you had to use it on one of your students I'm sorry, or your children. Oh, I'm sorry, that was funny. Another joke. So instead of throwing it out, just cut it into sections and you have uh, a great rolling pin. And a little bit of extra flour for rolling. And this is quick and easy. You want warm water. and. Uh, Again, you can look at the back of the sack and it'll give you the exact proportions, but you're going to have a better tortilla if you'll spend some time talking to it. My students always say, Chef, you're crazy. You're always talking about talking to food, but again, we've talked about that many, many times over the past couple of years. How does it look? How does it feel? How does it react when you add all the different ingredients together? How does it taste? So again, I'm just going to give you a quick example. Uh, warm water, this is probably about a cup of the masarina. And you're just going to add a little bit to start. And normally I like to get my paws in. If you've got gloves, uh, rubber gloves, uh, disposable uh, latex products, it's great. Or you can use a spoon. And just bring it together until it binds. If it's too loose, there's too much water. If it doesn't come together as a ball, there's not enough water. So you're having to think about the process, and I know it hurts sometimes to think, but that's the whole point about actually cooking is that you start to think about processes. And once you start thinking about what you eat and how you eat and who you eat with and where you eat, you know, maybe you start trying some new things and you have a bigger um, group sitting at your table and you have some great conversation and you're open up to a whole new world that you never experienced before. So you see how this is beginning to come together? At this point you want to get your hands in and start compressing it into a masa or ball. And so I've got one already made for convenience sake. And after it becomes a homogeneous whole and this one's a little bit loose because it's set. So we talk about gluten relaxing. Your gluten is as you work the dough, the proteins and the flour, the starch actually start to build up some resistance and you let it relax a little bit so it's going to be easier to roll later on. So this is a loose masa and it's for me it's a little bit too loose and that's why I've got flour to add to this as we cut it. So basically what you're going to want to do is a little flour on your table and then we're going to go ahead and let's talk about portions. Now if you've got you're going to have to cook this, and we'll talk about this as we move to the stove. Um, you're going to have to have a comal or a saute pan. And I like to make smaller tortillas because if I make them too big, I overstuff them, and all of a sudden I've got to take a nap. So I'd rather have two or three small ones. Now you can cut this into quarters after you've cut it into halves, or you could roll it into a log. 
of equal proportion, right? And then go ahead and cut that into sections, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this in half and then cut it in half again. And we'll make a couple of small ones for an example. So again, some flour, and I put some flour on my fingers because what I'm going to do is just try to round this out. I'm using my middle finger to push up into the dough as I push through my rounded index and thumb so that I get a nice round ball, okay? And I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. I'll move these out of the way. Flatten it out a little bit. And then you come back with your uh, broken broom handle that you used on your students or your child. Jeez, that's a terrible joke, isn't it? No, it broke because you were chasing the cats away from the back door because the food smells so good every night, right? Now you see how I'm giving it a kind of a quarter turn as I turn it around? Just quarter turn. And if it sticks to your handle or to your board, you know you have to have more flour, okay? There's going to be some resistance, again, because of the gluten. The more you work it, the more it tries to snap back. But this, to me, is like taquito size. Okay? Give it a turn. And then a roll. It's fun, when I lived in Mexico, to watch the Mexican women do it. They just use one hand and flip back and forth and the other hand, and they never really touch. Never could master it. You know? So you want to try to keep it as round as possible, but the neat thing about artisanal products or homemade products is never anything's really perfect as far as the shape goes, okay? So this is about as big as it's going to get, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and roll out a couple more, and then we're going to go ahead and go to the stove, and I'll show you exactly what to look for and how to cook it. So we went ahead and rolled out four tortillas, and again, you can see they're basically roughly the same, same size, uh, a little rough around the edges. Again, that uh, denotes homemade product. And I mean, I've eaten at restaurants as well as uh, family homes where the tortillas have been really oblong and unusual. And it's kind of a signature of the, the guest or the, uh, the host. So it's up to you. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can work on it. Now, cooking these things is dry heat, and again, a comal, and I don't have one with me today to show you, but if you go to the Mexican market, it's a big, round piece of metal with a handle on it, and that's what they cook. It's really thick, so it's a great heat conductor, and that's really what you want because you want something that holds the heat, so a thick bottom pan like this one, okay? Um, Ironclad, I think, is a brand. Something that's aluminum and flimsy may not work. So some of the flat grills that you can pick up, even at Walmart, uh, will work. They're just heavy. Cast iron. So we're going to put that on the stove, and I give it probably about eight minutes to preheat on a very low heat because, again, I don't want super uh, hot uh, fire underneath because you're just going to burn the tortilla. And <clears throat> so basically all you're going to do is once that gets preheated to the to the and Put your hand over it. Is it hot? Don't put your hand on it because obviously you burn yourself. But you know, as people ask, well, well, how do I know when it's ready? Well, put your hand over it. If it seems like it's really putting off some heat, then that's the point where you start. And so you just go ahead and put it in there, and don't touch it, like I just did, because it'll stick to the bottom of the pan. And uh, I can tell, by the way, that I threw that in, that I'm going to have to add some more heat. And so, and this is the point where we can have a long, conver philosophical conversation about. Uh, you know, tortillas and where they come from. You know, every culture has uh, flatbread, you know, and it's interesting, you know, who was the original flatbread, where did it come from? Obviously China, you think about mushu pork and the very thin crepes that they have, right? They're beautiful, rice flour crepes. You, know, you have tortillas and you have Middle East, you have pita bread. Um, so every culture has a flatbread. And again, for convenience sake, you think about, you know, traveling, working at the same time. Um, you see how it's starting to turn a little dark? Very lightly golden right now at this point. I'm going to just throw it back on there. And we're going to add a little bit more heat. So it should start to take on a little darker color a little faster. So I've turned up my heat because, again, you just can't walk away from it. Now, this is how you really learn what you need to do when you're cooking. How does it react when you put it in the pan? And so I'm going to give it another 30 seconds or so and then flip it. Now. Some people use a press, 
In other words, something that's flat with a handle that they can push on top of it. A lot of times I'll just take a piece of foil and roll it up. And so that's where you can press some of the air out of it because they will puff up. And you want to make sure that the inside's done. But basically, that's the process. You make a lot of these up ahead of time, have the family come in and help, right? Everybody's rolling tortillas, it becomes a family project, and everybody's talking about what they did at school today and what I did at work, and really, I, you know, it just adds depth to the conversation, adds depth to the familiar unit uh, while you cook together. Then you bring in a couple of pans so you can do this faster, or three, and you got Betty and Fred over here helping you do it. And the next thing you know, you got a whole lot of tortillas. And you can put those in the freezer after they cool down, right? Pull them out as you need them for the week that comes, and you're all ready. Great winter activity, too. Great summer activity. And so basically, you see, this is coming along just fine. I give it a little bit more color and a little more time. Now, look, I just did a few again. We started with the four. But you see how that's getting a nice little, and this could cook a little bit longer. We're just going to go ahead and force a little pressure on it. Now, that's burning me. You know, I'm going to have to go to the hospital pretty soon. Uh, the more you touch it, I tell the students, I say, just grab it, it's okay. You know, build up your, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, the lawyers are calling. But you do, over the years, you, you build up a little bit of, uh, I don't know, nerve damage, I guess. You don't feel the heat like you used to. So, but anyway, look at that. So, here's a little plate of tortillas. Look how beautiful, that's like a taquito size, you know? And think about all the things you can put into that. And they're fresh, and they're good, and they're crazy. I mean, there's no preservatives in a corn. And you made it yourself. Tacos, uh, burritos, you can make a great big one, 12 inch or something, if you've got a big saute pan and a big oven. But, but no, you should try these out. Maseca, that was really easy. Come on, you, you, you need to do it. Have the family really get some good food and some good quality time together, conversation and cooking. So, thanks for stopping by. Hope you'll do it again.